Hello everyone, welcome back. In this Python tutorial, we are going to learn about the date time module in Python and we'll briefly cover why we need to learn about date time module and how date time module and the classes and methods within the date time module will help us in our Selenium automation journey. So let me quickly create a new file and I'll name it as date time demo. All right, so date time is a module that will be available when you install your Python. So uh, you need to import that particular module. So the first thing that you have to do in order to work with the date time within Python is to import the date time modules, right? So you simply will import, so we'll say import and then we'll say date time, right? So date time module got imported now we can access the methods the classes that are there and we can access the method so basically we can uh, use all the methods that are available within this module uh, after we import right so that is similar concept as we have seen in any of the programming language like java we import the modules we import the classes and then we use the functions or methods that are avail available within those classes similarly in python we we are importing the date time module and now we'll use the methods within the module now say for example how this date time module helps us so say for example you are looking for the date and time stamps or you're looking for time stamp and especially in automation many times what we want to do is we want to uh, either save certain files in a certain format and timestamp is something which will make the file saving unique right so uh, with the timestamp, we will, we can be sure that when, when we are saving any particular file, the file name will be unique. If we use the timestamp and then format the timestamp and then save the file with that timestamp name. So in automation, that is very, very much required in many of the uh, scenarios. So that is why I wanted to cover this date time module and how you can use it. So say, for example, I want to get the current day, right, or current time. So we have all the methods available in this date time module. So what we have to simply do is we have to simply say, now let's say, for example, I'll define a variable. So I'll say current, say, for example, I want to do uh, current date okay so i'll say current date demo so this is the variable that i have defined and now i have because i have imported date time module so i can simply call the date time class and the methods within it right so i'll this is the date time so if you hover over here you will see that this is the module right so date time module we have imported now within the date time module this is the class so date time class and then i can access the methods of this class so date time uh, class has the methods today. So I want to get the today's date, for example. So I can say dot today and then say, for example, I'm just looking for the date. So I'll just call the method date. All right. So what this statement will do is from this date time module, we are using the date time class, right? So if I just hover over, you can see that this is the date time class. And within this class, we have these methods date uh, today method and the date, right? So what we are doing is we are getting the today's date. So if I print this now, so if I print this particular variable where I'm holding this, so current date demo, you will see the current date has been printed, right? So this is what the date time module will do for you. It will give you the output of the date and time. So for example, I'm looking for the time. So what I'll do is I'll simply let's copy this statement and I'll say current time. So I just want to say, for example, print the current time. So what I'll do is instead of today's date, I'll say today dot time, right? So I can then print the time. So it will print the time in this particular case. So I'll change it to current time demo. And if I run this, you will see this is the date and this is the time, right? Now there are modules. Uh, so basically within the module date time, there are classes date and time classes as well, but date time is a combination of both. So as, as an aut automation testing person, we don't really mind using date time. So we can format if you want just date or time, or we would, we want combination of both. Mostly we'll be using combination of both. And that is why we are using date time, uh, instead of separately date and time. 
All right. So if you just use the date class, it will give you the option for the date formatting or the date um, functions that are available. Uh, with the time, you will get the functions for the time. With date time, you get a combination of both. Right. As we see here. So now, say for example, I want a combination of the both. So current date time. Right. So I want to print current date and time. So what I can do is I can simply say date time dot date time dot today. Right. So this will print the date and time stamp for the current day. So if I run this now, so you'll see the first one printed date, the second one printed just the time for the current time. And the third is the combination of date and time, right? So that's what date and time class contains. It will give you the option to get the date and time both. But if you want separately date and time, you can use the methods date and time to get them separately as well. Okay. So that's the, these are the key things that you need to remember about the date time module and what you will be using. Now, why I'm explaining this is because say, for example, I want to during my automation execution, I want to store certain data into the files and those files need to be uniquely identifiable. So I can use date time stamp to name those files and how can I use it or how can I achieve it? Basically, now since we are storing the date time into, into the date time demo, there is a function string format okay so string format time so this is also available in the date time module and how we can use it say for example i want to i'll use a variable file name okay and i can use this particular time right so this is current date time demo if you see this is not formatted it is having hyphen then spaces then colons say for example i want to format it in a way so that I can use it consistently to name my file. So what I'll do is I'll simply say current date time demo and then call the method string format time, right? So I'll use this particular string format time, strf time, and then I can format the values there. Okay. So if I go to some of the documentation, let me open the docs. Okay. Click on the docs here, not this one. Let me open in the browser. So here, if you see that this is the method, right? So this is the documentation of this date time module. So this is very lengthy module as such. If you want to get into more detail, go through this module, but as part of automation testing, you won't be using all of it. But if you want to build your expertise around a date time module, then feel free to visit this particular page. So this particular method, if you see how we can use it, so we need to pass certain arguments, right? So format the way we want to format. So what all arguments basically it accepts if we scroll down or just search for. So here you will see all the directive basically, right? So if I want to use the year, right? So I use, I need to use percentage Y for the hour. It's percentage H, right? So this is basically year with century as a decimal. So it will print something like four decimals. If you see, if you use lowercase Y, then it will just print the double digits for the year. So uppercase H is for the hour. Okay. Then uppercase M is for the minute. So you can refer to this particular table and format the string accordingly. All right. Now, say for example, I want to format this date. Okay. So I can simply say percentage. I want to use year and then I can say, so I'll just use, I want to string formatting. So I'll use the string. So within the colons with uh, sorry, within the quotes and then hyphen, I want to format year followed by hyphen and then followed by month, right? So I can use the month. Okay. And then followed by hyphen, then the day. All right. Then followed by hyphen. I want to have the hour. So I can say percentage H capital H and then format followed by hyphen minutes. So capital M hyphen seconds. And if we want more, then we can use the microseconds as well. So I can say percentage F. So that will include microseconds as well. Okay. So now this particular date time that you have got will be formatted in this particular way. So you will have year, month, day, hour, minutes, seconds, and microseconds, right? And now we can use this particular string 
to name our file okay so if i print this file name let's see what the outcome is so if i run this now you will see that this is what by default got printed and this is what formatted string or the timestamp is now we can use this and name our file in any way we want and that file will be unique for us so this is very common scenario that we usually do in the automation and that's why i wanted to cover this particular date time module and what you can use within date time module when we go ahead into the automation frameworks as such in selenium with python all right so that's all for this tutorial around the date time module if you want to get into more details of the date time module and understand a lot deeper concept feel free to visit the documentation official documentation and learn more about the date time module but in terms of automation i'll be anyways covering all the details that you will be requiring for the date time module and then using the date time module to name your files so naming the files i'll cover once we get into the file input output module right so how you'll create the file how you'll read and write the file within python okay so that's all for this tutorial i hope it was helpful thank you very much for watching